Welcome students. In today's class, we are going to discuss again the chapter number 4, Retirement and Death of Partner, continuing from the last class. Today, we will be discussing the concept of hidden goodwill and how to calculate the amount of loan to a partner and what are the provisions of section 37 of Indian Partnership Act. So, let us start today's discussion with the first point concept of hidden goodwill. Hidden goodwill means when we are paying more to a partner than what is due to him. Why we are paying more? Naturally, there must be some goodwill. So, who will pay that goodwill? Yes, the remaining partners will pay that goodwill. So, let us see, if we are paying more to the retiring or deceased partner than what is due to him, it will be a case of hidden goodwill and the entry will be continuing partner account debit to retiring partner capital account and that is in gaining ratio. Now, how to calculate revaluation of assets and liabilities? The treatment is exactly the same what we have done in admission, but just to recapitulate. Let us see debit side means when losses are there and credit side means when income is there. And how do we get losses? When the assets value decreases or the liability value increases and in the opposite when asset value increases it is a gain and when the liability decreases it is a gain. So, in this way we calculate the profit or loss and distribute to all the partners who were existing at the time of revaluation that is all the old partners and in case of death we also include the dead partner also because he was there at the time of revaluation. Now, as we have done revaluation account in admission, so today we will be taking only few important entries and their impact on revaluation account and I hope you know how to make revaluation account. So, let us concentrate on some very good entries. If creditors are written back, that means they are not payable now. So, if the creditors are written back and we do not have to pay, is it a gain or loss? Yes, it is a gain. So, it will come on the credit side of revaluation account. If provision for bad debt is not required now, the liability is coming down. So, if the liability is coming down, that means it is a gain for us. So, it will again come on the credit side. If an old asset previously written off, now sold and you get some money out of that, it is again a gain. So, it is again credited to the revaluation account. Now, if the payment to the family of an employee is made who has died in an accident, now this is a loss and it will be debited to the revaluation account. Now, if we have to create a provision for workman compensation or provision for tax, now this is a loss, it will be debited in revaluation account. If out of fire insurance premium paid, 2000 is still unexpired. Unexpired means prepaid. Now, it is a gain, it will be credited. Similarly, if an existing provident fund liability is reduced, provident fund liability is a liability, it is getting reduced. So, it is our income that is gain which will be credited. And if the asset value is increasing, it is again a gain for us and it will be credited. Coming to the next topic, that is how to adjust the existing reserves. Existing reserves must be distributed among the old partners in their old ratio. So, that is accumulated profits or reserves account debit to all partners capital account in the old ratio. And if there are accumulated losses, yes, it is a reverse entry, that is all partners capital account debit to accumulated losses. So, partners will get if they have profits and partner will bear if they have losses. Now, how to calculate the amount due to retiring or deceased partner? How do we dispose of that? First option is you can pay in cash or you can pay by check also and you may treat it as a loan also 
but then you have to pay 6 percent per annum. I hope you remember the fundamentals that in case you are not paying, then you have to pay 6 percent per annum. And sometimes you can have a combination of both, you know, partly in cash and partly in loan. But please remember, interest will be there on the loan amount. And then we have an option of section 37. This is a new point. Section 37 of Indian Partnership Act says that you may take interest 6 percent or you have an option to take the proportionate share of profit till the date of settlement. Now, how to calculate this? We will come and see in a question. But please understand once again, suppose a partner dies on 1st January and you are settling his account on 30th June. So, for all these 6 months, whatever you have earned on his capital, a proportionate share will be calculated and given to that partner or interest 6 percent per annum. Both option you have to give him and naturally he will take whatever is great. Who will take a less option? Nobody will take a less option, right? We will see a calculation on this particular point. Let us understand this section 37 of Indian Partnership Act. Calculate total amount due to that outgoing partner, say A. Now, calculate total capital of all other remaining partners, let us say B. And now, calculate profit up to the date of settlement give it C. Now, please understand first was A amount to outgoing partner, B was all the remaining partners capital and C is the profit till the date of settlement. Now, how to calculate as per section 37? Follow this formula C into A upon A plus B. To simplify it, C means what is the profit? A means what is that partner share and divided by A plus B means total of all the partners capital taken together. To understand in numerical terms, let us say profit is 50,000, A capital is 10,000 and the remaining partners capital is 30,000. So, that makes it 50,000 into 10,000 divided by 10 plus 30 that is 40,000. Now, sometime we pay the partners in installment, you know 10,000 or 20,000 installment per year, but then we have to pay interest on that. Let us understand this concept by way of a simple example. Suppose 1 lakh is due to the partner with 10 percent per annum interest payable in 4 installments. Now, in loan account on the credit side first the balance will be 1 lakh and then 10 percent interest will be calculated that is 10,000, 10 percent of 1 lakh. Now, what is the installment? 1 lakh divided by 4, 25,000 with interest that is 10,000. So, that makes it 25 plus 10, you will be paying 35,000 in the first installment because interest has also to be paid. So, the remaining balance now is only 75,000. In the next year, we will calculate interest on 75,000, 10 percent of 75,000 which makes it 7500 rupees. And now, when you will pay the money that is 25,000 plus 7500 which makes it 32,500 rupees and the balance now becomes 50,000. I hope you can do the remaining calculation. 50,000 interest 5000, payment 30,000, remaining 25, right? And in the last go, it will be 25,000 plus 2500 and finally, finish off with 27,500 rupees. So, now we have understood that when we pay in installments, we pay the installment including principal plus interest for every year. Then the principal amount get reduced every year and interest amount also get reduced because when you pay the money, interest also get reduced. The next point is how to adjust the partner capital account in case of retirement or death. First point is, if the capital of remaining partner is given to you in the question, 
then it should be written in the balance carried down side on the debit side and then if your actual capital is less than that you will have to bring the money and if your capital is more than that then you will be paid back the extra amount. Let us understand in this way that if my capital is 30,000 right now and I require 50,000 so definitely I will be bringing 20,000 rupees. But if my existing capital is 60,000 and we want it at 50,000 then I will be paid back the excess that is 10,000 rupees right. Second point in this line is if the capital is fixed it should be divided in profit and loss sharing ratio and then the balance amount is brought or paid off. This can be understood like this if the firm capital is fixed at 2 lakh and we have 3 partners in the ratio of 532. So, first we will divide this 2 lakh in 5 by 10, 3 by 10, 2 by 10 and show it as balance carried down and then we will calculate what amount is to be brought or what amount is to be paid off. So, in both ways what we have to observe is if my capital is more I will be paid off, if my capital is less I will bring it on the credit side by cash. Next very important point in retirement is joint life policy treatment. Now, what is joint life policy? When we take a policy on the lives of the partners it is called joint life policy. Now, there can be 3 4 cases on that. Let us start with the first case when no joint life policy is given in the balance sheet, but we want to show it in the balance sheet at surrender value. Then what we have to do is pass an entry joint life policy debited to all partners capital account in old ratio. That is we are bringing joint life policy and creating the partner capital account in old ratio. In the second case if there is no joint life policy and you also do not want to show it in the balance sheet then you have to pass an adjusting entry similar to that goodwill entry oh yes that was continuing partner account debit to outgoing partner account in the gaining ratio. This was the same like in goodwill. Now, there can be another case when GLP is already given in the balance sheet and there is a change in the value that is joint life policy value can increase or decrease. Now, increase or decrease will be considered in the revaluation account and increase will be a profit on the credit side, decrease will be a loss on the debit side right. For example, joint life policy in the balance sheet is 20,000 and now it is valued at 15,000. So, revaluation debit will be 5,000. So, in today's discussion what we have understood is how to calculate goodwill, how to adjust goodwill, how to calculate the amount payable to a retiring partner, what are the provisions of section 37 of Indian Partnership Act which says you can get a proportionate share or 6 percent per annum whatever you want and in the last we have taken all the three cases of joint life policy of retirement. In the next class we are going to discuss death of a partner and how to calculate profits on the basis of turnover and all that. Till then goodbye thank you all of you.